Hi, everyone, and welcome to Map to Self, where everyday heroines gather to listen, learn, and share. I'm your host, Vanessa Scotto, and it's my pleasure to be here with all of you today on The Road Less Traveled. The Road Less Traveled is about busting through convention, outdated beliefs, and fears to follow a life that's true to who you really are. Map to Self is a place where women dialogue about real topics essential to all of our growth and our transformation. Community is key to me at Map to Self, so we're always happy and interested for anyone to join the conversation. As we said in the intro, the dial-in number is listed, so just feel free to call in and I'll pick up as soon as I can. Also, please visit us at our Facebook page at Map to Self and leave any comments, suggestions, or just read all of my uh, inspirational quotes and tips. Uh, There's also always information about the guests that we have on the show in case you're curious and want to find more out about the projects that they're pursuing right now. With Map to Self, you're part of a group of passionate women who empower themselves to live true and encourage others to do the same. The topic of today's show, I think, is relevant to every single one of us, and it's about recreation. Our guests today know firsthand what it's like to stand at a crossroads, to feel the pain of the past nipping at their ankles, but the beauty of unknown possibilities lying before them. They understand what it takes to summon the courage to move forward and to create a life that speaks to who they are at their core. One of our guests today, Andrea Costantin, was quoted in their book as saying, everyone has a story. It's whether we choose to live that story over and over again, or if we choose to create a new story that really makes the difference in how we live our lives. And I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment. As we've discussed in earlier episodes, too often we let our past dictate the course of our future. Today we're speaking to the inherent challenges but more importantly, the bountiful blessings that are available when you own where you are and empower yourself to manifest the life you desire. I apologize, a little technical difficulty. Um, Skype dropped my call, so I'm back. And, And the show today is unique in that we have three guests. Our first two guests, Lisa Schultz, and Andrea Costantine are co-authors of the book, Speaking Your Truth, Courageous Stories from Inspiring Women. I highly recommend going out and purchasing this book. I got the book myself on Kindle, and I was reading it when I was sitting on the New York City subway. And the first chapter of the book, as I was reading about this woman's tale of resiliency and of all that she had faced, In this case, it was about loss. I found myself crying, sitting on the New York City subway, crying. Uh, And really, it was just because I was so moved by the honesty and authenticity, and it really related deep inside of me to this place that she was sharing of how we face suffering and how we overcome. So Lisa and Andrea can speak not only to their own transformational journeys, but to the profound wisdom that they've gathered in meeting so many women on the road to becoming published authors, workshop leaders, event planners, and writing coaches. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Lisa and to Andrea. Hi, Lisa and Andrea. Are you on the air? Yes, this is Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Andrea? Yes, I'm here. Okay, welcome, ladies. It's my pleasure to have you here on the show, and I'm so excited to hear a little bit more about each of your journeys and how you came to this place of publishing such an amazing uh, compilation and what it's like for you contacting so many different women and hearing all of their stories and even sharing your own so openly. Yeah, thank you for for that. We're so excited. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so, you know, bear with us. We'll get a good rhythm uh, in all of us sharing our, and expressing ourselves. So, Lisa, let's start with you, because I know that this book was the brainchild that you came up with after having 
endured your own life circumstances. So can you share with the listeners a little bit about what personally moved you and got you so inclined to start this process of writing a book and speaking to so many women about their lives? I'd be happy to tell you about it. Um, It all really started in my mind in early 2009. That was sort of a landmark year. It was 10 years after my divorce, which occurred in 1999. And I think sometimes we reflect when we've hit a a milestone like that, a 10-year period of time. And I was reflecting early 2009 about how far I had come since that really difficult time in my life. I wrote about it in my chapter, but um, 99 was not my favorite year. It was quite devastating. Um, My marriage had been declining and was not a good place for me, but I I was completely devastated and blindsided when my My husband at the time sat me down in in early January of that year and and said, you know, I've been having an affair, we're getting a divorce, Um, I found the love of my life, I'm going to marry her, Um, you know, we're done. And um, it was really hard on me, um, and to say the least, I mean, I was was just in a very bad place that year. I I did a lot of crying and a lot of... um, you know, just anguished times. And I did pull out of it, though, and I I picked myself up and I said, you know, I had two very young daughters at the time, and I said, you know, it is not good for my daughters to see me in such absolute devastation. I'm not being a good mom, and I'm not showing them the strength of, of a mom and a woman that they need when they're growing up. And so I, I went through a variety of of Oh, courses and seminars and groups and, and all sorts of things. I devoured books on recovery from divorce and and learning about why my ex-husband at the, um, now, but why he, you know, sort of became ugly and and learned a lot and you know put myself um, into over time a much better place in my life and I the people that knew me in 2009 would have never guessed about the devastation that I went through and how how stuck I was in that. And so I, I thought to myself, you know, there are other women struggling in divorce and, and, and difficult times of their life, and I want to let them know that even if in their bleakest hour that you can get through it and you can become an amazing person living an amazing life and I wanted to share that with other women to help them if they needed a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But I thought, you know, just my story alone would mm-hmm. be fine, but I wanted to gather more stories, and I wanted to have more impact, And because my story may not be relatable to everyone. And, I, and so I put the call out to kind of the universe through my networking organization locally and social media, and I said I'm compiling this book and I want to have inspirational stories by women for women to help them along their journey, to be a beacon of light to them, and put that call out in 2009. And I was delighted when the very first chapter submission I received is from my now business partner, Andrea Constantine, and I was tickled pink to get that um, that chapter, although I was very moved, and it, it made me cry when I read it, but I, yeah, it, it really up. gave fuel, yeah, it gave fuel to the fire that, to keep going with the project, and later in the year, I asked her to actually partner with me in completing the project, which was the best decision that I ever made, and together, we brought it to completion, um, and you know, it's been a wonderful journey that's just now unfolding with lots of positive ripple effect and, and subsequent volumes and things coming out. So um, Andrea was just a fabulous um, gift to me because I didn't even know her really before um, 2009, and now um, we're working together on some-